to the entire world. Be blessed and stay phenomenal. Welcome back to the podcast or welcome to the podcast, Finding God for Yourself, because that is the most essential way to live your life is to truly find God for yourself. There are several different outlets. There are many resources that God has provided us here on this earth as a way, a method, a lesson, a strategy to find God. Now let us remember this, the very first question that God posed, that God had for man was, where art thou? Where are you? W-Y-A. That was the very first question God had for us as the human race. God's race, God's creation. That was the very first question. Now you think on that. The very first question is, where you at? So God has always been searching for us. Don't you agree? As much as we say we are searching for God, God has always been searching for us. And this is why it is important to find God for yourself. Truly think on these things. God has sent us many messengers, many different messengers. God has sent us. God has given us many signs, wonders and signs. But do we pay attention to the wonders and do we pay attention to the signs that God has given us? Jesus spoke on the comforter. Jesus talked to us and Jesus sat us down And we had the disciples and many others that were there in representation of us. Our ancestors were essentially there listening to what Jesus had to say at the Last Supper. It was more than the one seated at the table with Jesus Christ the Nazarene that were present. Do not get it confused. It was not just the 12 disciples who Jesus spoke to, who Jesus spoke about. It was not just those 12 individuals who are thrusted into the forefront. Yes, they are that front line, but there were so many more that were dedicated and diligent, and they sought after the kingdom of God through Jesus Christ the Nazareth, and they were present, and they heard the words Jesus spoke outside, in the upper room, all across, they heard, and they were there. Jesus spoke on the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. The Holy Spirit is here right now and has never left us as the human race. I want you to recall, in the beginning, we're going to Genesis. Now, let us Go to Genesis. Genesis states, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, if we know, it says, in the beginning, we know something is already in motion because it says in. So if you are in something, you are already in motion motion in something that is active, something that is in movement. And to prove furtherwise that you are inside of the beginning, which the beginning is not the starting. It is not the true start point because you are in the beginning, meaning it is already in motion because it carries the suffix ing. The suffix I-N-G means motion. So you think about this. 
in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Think on this. The Holy Spirit has been with God before the beginning. The Holy Spirit, the comforter, which Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, spoke on, was with us before the beginning. And what did that Spirit of God do? It moved upon the face of the water, the surface of the water. Our body is made up of mostly water. And you have to realize the Holy Spirit moves in you. It moves about you. It moves across you. It flows within you and without of you. Every single breath you take is a breath from the Holy Spirit. The air you breathe contains what? Water. Yes. The fastest conductor of heat is steam. Steam will burn you faster than fire. Steam, water, vapor produces smoke. Vapor is smoke. So understand that boiling, that water, that fire that is inside of you is from the Holy Spirit because I say this because Jesus left us with the Holy Spirit and we were anointed with cloven tongues of fire. Now these words I speak are words that Jesus spoke. We shall go about and do greater works than what Jesus has done. That encompasses all the healing, the walking on the water, which the Holy Spirit moved upon the face of the waters. Jesus moved upon the surface of the water. Jesus walked on the face of the waters. Don't you understand? Moses split the face of the waters. Do you realize Noah stood and floated upon the face of the water in that ark? Do you understand that John the Baptist went into the deep of the water with the human flesh that God hath made before anyone realized what John the Baptist was doing? They thought he was crazy. But though John the Baptist was following the direct strategic instructions from God's stratagem to baptize people, to carry people into the deep and place them into the water and bring them up. Think on these things. God has always used water to purify, to cleanse. People want to look at the flooding. They want to look at the famine, the drought, the lack of water, not realizing they are the living water because anyone who has ever spoke good during the drought, God has blessed them. Anyone who has ever given during the famine, God has superseded all things in their life and they live within the overflow of that oil and flower of life. But it is up to us as the human race to realize that this all is preceded by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, which our ancestors recognized. 
before they recognized who Jesus was, they knew who the Holy Spirit was because Jesus then came in also as representation. Because the Holy Spirit is a representative of God. In the spirit, Jesus in the flesh, son of God, in the flesh. So what does that say about God? That God has representatives seen Jesus Christ, us the human race, we are the representatives of God here on this earth. The Holy Spirit, which flows and endows you and I on a continuum. Now, how powerful is God that God has sent us a spiritual, unseen with no form representative, because if we remember, the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. Mm. God allowed his spirit to come to us. So therefore, God has been searching for his creation that is made up of mostly water, the human race. Now, isn't that something that we are mostly made up of water, but we cannot even see the water that we are made up of. Sometimes we feel so dehydrated that it, we, we don't even believe that water is within us. So thirsty. Understand the power of the Holy Spirit. Understand you've never asked your heart to beat on a consistent basis. You don't have to say millisecond by millisecond, decisecond by decisecond, second by second, heartbeat, heartbeat, lungs inhale, lungs exhale, eyes blink, eyes blink. You don't have to do that. You don't have to sit there and say brain, formulate a thought. Mouth, vocal cords, get it together, get ready to vibrate. Tongue, get ready to flex up and down. Lips, get ready to move so you can articulate and pronounce and announce and enunciate all you're trying to say. No, we don't have to do these things. Doesn't that sound like a lot? But it comes natural. That is the gift of life. And this is why today we call it the present tense. Because we are living in the present tense of God. God has always blessed us. This is a gift. It is a present that we are living in now. So why can't we take it a step further and ask God to endow us with more since we already do know that Jesus said that we shall go about and do greater works than what Jesus and the disciples and the prophets and all who had walked the earth before have done. That includes Moses. That includes David. That includes Solomon. That includes Enoch, that includes Noah, that includes Mary, that includes Esther, that includes Sarah, that includes every single person that has walked the earth before we have. Don't you realize it? Don't you understand that Jesus was talking to us? Jesus was not speaking to the people who were on the earth at that current moment in time with Jesus. They thought Jesus was nutty. They wanted Jesus' head on a stake. They would much rather have a killer, a murderer, whose name I would rather not say, set free. They wanted Jesus that bad. The evil spirit. Spirit was that encompassing in that moment that people were blinded with stupidity and ignorance. Now, all of us, 2,000 years later, 
if we could, we would have convinced them some way, some shape, some form or fashion that Jesus is real. What is wrong with you all? What are you doing? But guess what? If the future, 2,000 years from now, could see us, they'll be like, what are you doing? Why aren't you asking God for more? Why aren't you asking Jesus, the Christ, the Nazarene, for more? Why aren't you asking to the Holy Spirit? Why aren't you calling upon the Holy Spirit to give you more? Why are you still stuck on a mustard seed level of faith? Because Jesus didn't say that's where you had to stop. Look at what we have 2,000 years later. That's what they will be saying to us as we are speaking upon the people who walked before us. So we shall listen to what Jesus was saying. And Jesus is now speaking through a new generation of prophets. Jesus is now speaking through a new generation of seers. Jesus is speaking through a new generation of children. Jesus is speaking through a whole new pure-hearted generation that only seek the kingdom of God, and they are in a relentless fashion doing so. They are relentlessly, relentlessly seeking that kingdom. Because if you seek the kingdom of God in a fashion that is relentlessly relentless. And yes, I just said that. If you seek the kingdom of God in a fashion that is relentlessly relentless, you shall find that kingdom of God and God will be there. Because remember, God sought you first. The Holy Spirit is here. Call upon the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Call upon the Holy Spirit to give you the things that you need. The Holy Spirit will give you every single thing that you need. This is that comforter that Jesus left us with. Understand that you can call on the Holy Spirit. You can use the Holy Spirit. Yes, you can. It is not just for your pastors to use. It is not just for who you think is anointed to use because we all were made in the image and the likeness of God. We all have the Holy Spirit flowing through us. You must call upon the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit shall be there because the Holy Spirit is already here here waiting on you waiting on you the holy spirit has never left when was the last time you've said holy spirit bless me with financial increase when was the last time you said holy spirit endow me with the physical strength that i need to get through the day in the name of jesus christ by the power of God, you can call on the Holy Spirit and do so with joy. The disciples did, and these are some of the secrets that they truly don't want you to understand. They just want you to think and to call on Jesus, but Jesus has told you he has left you with the comforter. Jesus came back as an example to his disciples to say, stop calling on me to come back. I left you with the Holy Spirit. I left you with the comforter. I've come back, and I've come back, and I've come back. How many times must I come back and tell you, where is your faith? Understand. No, so no, it was not just Thomas. Go back and read the book of Thomas before you think Thomas was doubting Thomas. It is so easy for you to think Thomas was a doubting Thomas because I also thought that because I grew up hearing sermons preached by pastors speaking on how Th Thomas was doubting Thomas. Oh, Thomas was a doubter. The rest of the disciples believed all oh, this. No, go and read the book of Thomas. And if I have the opportunity to, I will recite the book of Thomas, the audio book of Thomas, and I will put it here on this podcast. So don't be so swift to doubt the doubter of Thomas because he didn't doubt God. 
God made a promise through Jesus that all the disciples would be there to see Jesus in the flesh. And Thomas wasn't there. Where was Thomas? That's not put into the Bible. It's not put into the Bible what Thomas was doing, how he was bringing people closer to God, and how Thomas was raising the dead while Jesus from the dead was speaking to the other disciples. But I'm going to stop it there on that. And that was through the power of the Holy Spirit that Thomas was doing these things. This is how much belief that Thomas had. So don't necessarily believe the words that come out of a mouth of another human unless you do your own diligent research. You must find God for yourself and the pathway to finding God is through that Holy Spirit, through that comforter that is here, that has not left, that will always be here, that is infinite and more. Call on the Holy Spirit. It is so easy to talk about what's sensational here on this earth. Oh, this is going to happen this year. This is going to happen this year. This is the year of this. This is the year of that. Yes, we all can talk about these sorts of things, but do you know how to talk about the Spirit here on this earth? Do you know how to talk about the Holy Spirit and how to live in the Spirit as you live in the world of the flesh? That is what the Holy Spirit is yearning and seeking. Everyone wants the pathway to heaven, not understanding as Jesus Christ taught us how to pray on this earth as it is in heaven. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done here on this earth as it is in heaven. So right there. You should be looking to do God's will, the spiritual heavenly will here on this earth. You should be looking to be filled with the countenance of the Holy Spirit here while you walk this earth. You should be looking to have the appearance of Jesus Christ, God, the Holy Spirit, because you were made in that image and likeness. But are you bold? I dare ask you. A triple dog dare ask you. Are you bold enough to believe that you hold the countenance, the image, the likeness? Of God, because what did Jesus say? Those who seek that kingdom of God, those who follow God's word, those who believe in me, who believe in God, are my brother. They are my sister. They are my mother. So when you look at your brother, don't you see yourself? When you look at your mother, don't you see yourself? When you look at your sister, hallelujah, don't you see yourself? Notice he didn't say the father because it's only one father. Hallelujah. I want you to understand this is what Jesus is talking about. Fear not, fear not. Have enough faith. Ooh, hallelujah. Have enough faith to believe. Did you know the phrase fear not appears in the Bible 365 times? Yes, I said that. The phrase fear not appears in the Bible 365 times. Yes, that's one for every single day of the year. And also, that's one for every single day of your life if you say it. Jesus told us that we should get up and we should renew our minds. That is the way to renew your mind. Are you bold enough to say that you were made in the image and likeness of God? Someone at the store asked me the other day, do I go to church? And I told them, I am the church. And they looked at me and they were taken back. He was an older gentleman. And I looked at him and I told him, you are the church. Everyone around us is the church. That is a building. But you are the church in which Jesus was talking about. It wasn't just Peter. Peter is a representation of what will last after Jesus had passed. And 
Peter is what? A human being who spreads the word of God. Peter was a host. Peter was a host of the Lord. And you are, and I am. We serve the Lord. If you think on these things, when you walk into a restaurant, the very first person to greet you is a host. It is the host who greets you first. And what a lovely feeling it is to have a host greet you with a smile, greet you with a beverage, make sure your children have something, maybe make sure you have an appetizer on the house if the line is long, because surely the line is long to see the Lord. But yet... You feel like you're already in the presence of the Heavenly Father because you have all the supplications as the people who are actually inside of heaven. You have them because you were made in the image and likeness of God. But are you aware of these things? Because if you were, you would celebrate here on this earth in a spiritual, holy connotation because the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. God has put His Spirit in you. No, not just an image, not just a likeness. That is the secret of God. God has placed a Spirit in you. And that Spirit is the Holy Spirit. That Spirit is the Spirit of God. And Jesus, Jesus left us with that spirit, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Because that Holy Spirit had to stay here with us. That Holy Spirit had to stay here with us. That is why. Yes, you see what I am saying. You hear what I am saying to you. That Holy Spirit had to be here. In order for that Holy Spirit to be here and remain with us, as that Spirit had to forsake the Son of God, God in the flesh, to remain with us. Understand these things for yourself. Study for yourself. Grasp the Word of God for yourself. If you have questions, ask the Holy Spirit for the answer. Don't just ask the pastor for the answer. You ask the Holy Spirit for the answer. I dare you to ask the Holy Spirit for the answer to whatever questions you have. I dare you to communicate with God directly for the answer. For surely, when God has left us with the Holy Spirit, which is Thought, action, all things that the Holy Spirit knows the answer. And the Holy Spirit would provide that answer. There is nothing that the Holy Spirit cannot give to you. This is the Spirit of God. It is the Spirit of God. We have the spirit of God and we must utilize that spirit to spread it in a positive fashion. All across this world. All across this world. And then here we are. With war taking place. Here we are with soldiers, civilians getting caught up, crossfire. Here we are, not living righteously. Here we are, not standing collectively, asking for protection for those who are protecting the ones that need protecting. Here we are. And I ask the Lord to bless this world, and to protect all those protecting those that need protection. All the U.S. soldiers across this world, I am praying for you. All the allied soldiers all across this world, I am praying for you. 
I am not ashamed to sit here on this platform and say, I am praying for you soldiers who are doing things that I would and could not do. I thank you. For you have the breastplate of the Lord on. You have been girded by the loins of Jesus Christ. You have been strapped up by the boots of the Holy Spirit. Your weapon is sharp. It is balanced and it is aimed, filled with power and the righteousness of the living word. And you shall aim it and direct it in whatever connotation and fashion that it needs to be. Because God is with you. And I thank you. Again, I thank you. For I am not there in your shoes. But the Spirit of God is with you. The Holy Spirit is with you. And the Holy Spirit will protect you. Just understand there are people who are grateful. Do not pay attention to the naysayers. Do not pay attention to the haters. Do not pay attention to all those that want to distract you from the stratagem that God has beseeched before you. You are mighty. You are are strong. You are powerful. Your family is protected as you protect others who need protection. Let us say a prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done. And we thank you for choosing us, the human race, to do your will here on this earth as it shall be done in heaven, Father. And you have always provided us with our daily bread, Father. Let us have the strength and the courage to forgive all, Father, that have wronged us, that have sinned against us, that owe us, Father, that have been unkind to us. And, Father, we ask for forgiveness for the people that we have been wrong to, that we owe, that we have been wrong to, that we have treated with ill intent. We thank you, Father, for giving us these strength. We thank you, Father, for we know that you are the righteous way, the path, the power, and the kingdom. You are the glory, the honor, the protector, the buckler, and all that we have ever desired and ever needed in our lives, Father. And we are proclaiming this now. We are not ashamed, Father, and we have never been ashamed. And now you are giving us a platform to speak up, Father, and we are speaking, God. We are speaking in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene by way of the power of the Holy Spirit. Indeed, we are, and we thank you and claim all things that we even know not to ask for, Father, but you know that we need, you know that we desire, but we know not how to articulate. We know not how to articulate these things. I thank you, God. I thank you. For these and many other blessings, we will continuously pray in your name forever throughout these generations. Amen, amen, and amen. God is with us as always. God is not going to go anywhere. God's not going to go anywhere. God's not going to go anywhere. Okay? Nowhere. Because God is now here. Just take the word nowhere and separate it. And then you have an understanding of what I just said. Because this is where we are. We are now here. And this is why God is going to go nowhere. Keep your faith. Remain hopeful. Remain diligent. God is with us. God is with us. 
Now you stay tuned and we will continue on to another series and we will speak further and further in depth and let us pray for these troops all around the world. Amen, amen, amen. Now remember, plan strategically for your life or your life will strategically plan for you. Be blessed and stay phenomenal. Thank <laughs> you.